the channel ladies and gentlemen today we're going to be breaking down a music video which has over 1 billion views we're going to be talking about this zane pillow talk music video so i watched through this and there's actually a wide range of different very interesting visual effects which we're going to go in dive in and talk about there's a lot that we're going to show and that's the name of the game for this channel i always want to be finding new stuff for you guys to use different plugins different techniques for things that we talked about in the past so i think that you guys can definitely pull a lot away from this so let's get right into it we're going to start from the beginning and just work our way through the things that I find interesting here. So we're going to focus on more of the distortions, all of the little clone effects that are happening, but I want to give a little mention to, to these invert effects that are happening throughout the video because we just talked about that in some of my recent uploads where we talked about using the colorama effect in After Effects to create some of these darker invert preset looks or this reddish bluish look. So I'll link that down below if you are interested, just a little pre-word. So the very first little clone distortion effect that we're going to do is this one right here and this is pretty simple I'll do this in After Effects but of course you guys could just search for the same effect names and follow along in Premiere if you want but let's start off with number one so we're gonna create these little ghosts behind our subject um, and little bonus note I'm pretty sure that they filmed this with a prism in front of their camera lens so if you'd like to create this RGB distortion and have all these different variations you can just search for a prism you can get them from various different businesses or on Amazon. So let's start in Adobe After Effects. If you're working with a dynamic link in Premiere, you can alt drag your footage up, right click on it, click replace with After Effects composition. That'll load with an After Effects. And of course, I've said it millions of times, if you only have After Effects, you can just start within After Effects. Okay, so our footage is already within Adobe After Effects. We're gonna start off by masking out our subject and we're gonna use rotoscoping for this. So if you want, you can watch my full rotoscope guide. If not, I'm just gonna do it pretty quick here, but it's very easy. All you need to do is double click on your footage. Once you've double clicked, you should now be in a layer. If it still says composition, just double click on it again. So in this layer here, we're going to go up to the top left in your toolbar and we're going to select the Roto Brush tool. If you've updated to the newest version of After Effects, you should have the Roto Brush 2.0, which is more improved. And we're just going to trace over what we'd like to mask. And in our case, that's going to be our subject here. And if you want to delete anything from the mask, you hold down Alt and you just drag away like that. And again, I'll leave a link below to my full rotoscoping guide if you guys are confused. All right, guys, so once you've used those Rotobrush painting tools and you have a rough little outline of your subject, what you want to do is you want to click page down just to move to the next frame. And you're going to want to make those tiny little adjustments to anything corrected. And again, since this is Rotobrush 2.0, it's using AI to kind of learn and adjust. So the more you go along, the easier the process and the more smooth it's going to become. What you also want to do is hold down control and alt and just zoom in on this little area here, this little mini timeline. You're going to see this gray kind of box. This is the area that it's going to be freezing. Take the end part of this gray meter, start it at the beginning, scroll to the end, and we're going to drag this gray box to the end part here. This is the area that we'd like to mask out. Once we've gone through and made all of our step-by-step -step minor adjustments, you just click freeze at the end and it'll mask it all out. Here's a little time lapse of me going through here and making those minor adjustments for the mask. All right, so as you guys saw there, I only had to make a few adjustments because of how useful Rotoscope 2 is. So I'm very thankful for that. We're gonna click freeze here and it's gonna mask out our subject. And now we can apply our little behind the back duplication effect. So let's pop back into the composition here. Just click this tab in the top left. Now you'll see you have a layer that is masked out. And there's a few bumps in here. So let's go in and just kind of adjust and just go to your effect controls, selecting this clip and we can bump up our feather if we'd like. And this doesn't have to be perfect because we're gonna end up blurring this either way. I also bumped up reduce chatter so that you have a little bit less of that choppy edges around the shoulders that you were seeing there. And that's looking pretty good. This should be perfect for what we're going for. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna select that layer. We're going to click Control D to duplicate it. So Control D. Now we're gonna select the bottom layer here and we're gonna go ahead and delete the roto brush effect from our effect control. So select your bottom layer. Select Roto Brush and delete. So now everything looks normal, but if you hide your bottom layer, you'll see you have your isolated subject layer on top. And if we hide this, you'll see you just have your normal footage on the bottom. Let's go ahead and rename this. We're gonna rename this to our subject masked. And you'll see if I just click V, I can drag. So that's in place. We have that where we want it. So now taking a look back at what we're trying to create, you'll see that these are behind our subject. So how can we place these little clones dragging out from behind? 
So an easy way to do that, go ahead and click Control D on our subject mask layer again. Let's right click and rename this to Ghost. And we're gonna place this Ghost layer underneath our subject mask layer. So if I just click and drag this layer, you'll see now it looks like there's something behind our subject. Now let's just turn this ghost layer into that ghostly look that we want, those ghostly clones kind of panning out. So let's start at the beginning of the timeline, just click and drag over. And we're going to go ahead and first of all, let's just hide these two layers for now, just so we can see what we're working with. Don't worry about this. This is just a little buffering from our motion blur that's on. But let's go over to our effects and preset window here over on the right. And at this point, you have a few options. If you guys want, you guys can just add some sort of blur. So I could add a camera lens blur effect onto here. Now you'll see if I move that over, here's what that looks like. Kind of looks like a ghostly form moving away. You guys can experiment with any different kinds of blur. Cross blur, that one kind of has that more dreamy kind of light look. So maybe we'll go with that one. You guys can even just go over to this mode here in the bottom left. This is your blending mode. And you can experiment with different versions of that. So you can set it to light and you can set it to screen. And you can find different variations that suit best whatever footage you are um, applying this effect onto. And you'll see I moved that over over so I could see what the effect is doing, but let's create a little animation where it kind of stretches out like in the original. So we're gonna open up our transform options here and I'm gonna click reset. And now again, starting at the beginning of the timeline, I'm going to just click and drag down on all of these little stopwatches to create a keyframe. Now I'm gonna drag a little bit on my timeline for however long I want the animation to be. So maybe like this long. And then I can take my position value and I can just stretch that out. So here is what we made. We made a little animation where that ghost clone kind of just pops out. It kind of looks like this little hologram effect. So I'm happy with that. Now let's just duplicate that a bunch of times and then change this keyframe value. Control D to duplicate it. And all you need to do here is just open your little triangles, go back to your transform. So you should see the little keyframe here that is created from the transform value. You guys could just take your position value and move it to where you want it. And here is what that looks like. So just changing your values. If I wanted to put one to the right, again, I'd control D to duplicate it and open up my transform. I'd find this little keyframe transform and I'd move it over to the right. So you can easily add in your duplications like that. An alternative thing that you could try is instead of duplicating all of these layers, let's hide ghost two and ghost three layer for now. And let's just select this ghost one layer, the first little duplication we made that's pulling out. You can go to your effects and presets and you can apply a little echo effect onto here. So let's apply that. And now you're gonna see that this kind of creates its own little duplications. So if we go to our effect controls for the ghost layer and we bump up your number of echoes and then you have your echo time here. You see now it creates these kind of ghostly floating clones here. You don't want them glowing that much. Um, you, can get, you guys can play around with your echo operator. I've also made it a full tutorial talking about a bunch of different variations with the echo effect in general, but you can create some really cool stuff just kind of playing around with that. And you'll see you have these different variations of the duplication all in different starting time. All right, guys, so this is probably one of the more visually striking points of the music video. I think they really did this very well. Um, and again, Everything's going to really depend on your footage because what they're doing is they're taking duplications of their footage, like how I showed you earlier, where we rotoscope it out, and then they're applying all these distortion, ghosting techniques to really get this blend of shapes and colors like you're seeing here. So it may not look exactly like this, but I'm going to show you how we can create these distorting patterns. So let's go in to After Effects and let's just start playing with some distortion effects. All right, so we're back with only our original footage and just our subject mask roto layer that we did earlier. So what we're going to do here, control D and duplicate this again. And again, if you duplicate this, anything above this, this mass layer is gonna obviously be above. Anything below is gonna look like it's behind our subject. Let's start with the below. We're gonna add that optics compensation distortion and that should stretch out this layer and kind of put it along the edges. So just search for optics compensation. It's under distort. And you'll see it puts us in a layer here. So what we're gonna do is we're going to just grab this value and if we pull it past where it should be pulled, you can get some really crazy kind of stretching stuff. Let's go back in the composition. And here's what that looks like. So we have that layer and it's kind of stretched out from this optics compensation. And you really get this kind of pixel stretched effect here. 
Now let's just keep stacking effects on here, keep distorting. One great way to really have this sort of uh, rippling look and this real distortion that's kind of pulling things like the face here is the Turbulent Displace effect, which is in After Effects and Adobe Premiere. And always keep in mind that you can change the center of this. You can kind of stretch it to the left, Stretch it to the right, change your view center here. So let's look up our turbulent displace effect. We're gonna place that onto our subject mask too. And let's rename this to optics. You see immediately it's adding all these different ripples into here. So we can go into our turbulent displacement and also play around with the order of things. Sometimes when you change the order of these effects, you're gonna get different looks and results. So if I crank this up, you'll see it kind of breaks off, but we still have the stretching. But if we take that effect and place it under the optic compensation, now you kind of have this whole crazy mess. You can change the size here. You can add more complexity. So vertical displacement, I think is a good one horizontal displacement, cross displacement. Let's go with vertical displacement. You see, if I change the size, I'm just getting all these different variations of what's really going on here. So you can do an insane amount of different things. And like I said at the beginning, the footage is gonna determine. You'll see that the color it's getting and all the shapes and the patterns is getting taken from the colors of our subject that we masked here. And when you look back at this one, you see that these are all gray. You kind of have her skin color in there. We're gonna go to our mode. And again, playing around with that screen, add, lighten. In the original example, it's an all black background. So this is gonna blend in with what we have here. It's gonna look pretty different. And we're gonna just bump up our radius. And maybe that's too blurred. And if you want it to be rotating all crazy, like in the music video here, it's kind of just playing off of its own positioning. But if you want it to be rotating and transforming a lot, what we can do is we can go up to the turbulent displace here. So we'll just keyframe, drag down. And as we drag along here, we can just crank values and see what we get. So if you want this to kind of just be rippling, we can maybe just keyframe some evolution. There is really a bunch of different things that you can do with this, and you're gonna get so many different results. I think this in and of itself looks pretty cool. If you want, maybe you can mask something in the background or you can mask just like a small part of the background. Um, so for example, this kind of light in the bush that's back here, let's control D and I'll just re and I'll rename this to um, light. And then I'm just going to grab my masking tool, this little rectangle tool in the top left. If you're not seeing that, hold down Alt and just click. I'm going to draw a little square around here. It brings up this mask right here. If you're not seeing that, click M on your keyboard. Now right click on that mask and I'm going to just track mask it, but make sure we're starting at the beginning of our footage. Right click, track mask. If you're not seeing this, here's my tracker window. Just click play and it's just going to stick around the general area of that light. All right, so now what we can do, since we've isolated this little light part, we can just grab some of these effects. Maybe we can even just copy and paste them. So Control C and Control V. And there you go. Now you've just added in some crazy looking distortion that just flies in out of nowhere and is doing some cool stuff from a different part of the scene. So this in of itself, I think, is just a cool effect. It's one of the most crazy experimental things I think we've talked about on the channel. All right, guys, so at 102, another very similar thing to what we just talked about. And I think that whenever you just look at this scene, it may seem like it's different. Here's another little example of it. Um, again, I'm pretty sure they're filming with a prism in front of the camera to create this natural little distortion here. All right, so let's go in and deconstruct this a little bit. So let's hide some of these different variations here. Let's just go to the beginning here and let's reset our turbulent displacement. So click reset here and let's just work with our settings and try and create something that looks like the music video. So here, as you see, I just kind of cranked up the amount and we're already starting to get that sort of distorted base stuff where you can see everything going on. And of course, changing the evolution a bit, you can stretch things together. Complexity, if you want to kind of distort it more, what you can do is you can actually change just the size of the layer. So let's go to transform and we can just scale that up. And now you'll see we have something similar to that. It's more just bizarre looking. It's more of just the turbulent, but it's also has that kind of that artistic look that they were going for. So this is without any keyframing to the turbulence. If you want, you could go in keyframe this, add maybe something subtle so that it's rotating, it's bending, just really taking what we've done, deconstructing it a bit, taking off the optics compensation, Here's what it would look like on, then lowering down the blur. You notice in this video, and it also happens later on,
But at the start of this little effect here, you can see this kind of 3D projection coming off of, coming off of the subject here. And whenever you see these sort of mountain-like pixel structures growing off, that's when you really want to go towards this sort of 3D glitch effect. So I created this awesome 3D glitch effect tutorial. And in this, we talked about how you can use some different values, some different duplications to kind of extend different parts of your video. It's some really interesting 3D glitch results. So if you want, you guys can follow along. It's using an expression in After Effects, so it does use some setup. Of course, that'll be linked below for free. If you want to skip time and just kind of drag and drop this onto your footage, I also have this entire project file set up so you can just drag in your own footage and then the slider will work and you'll be able to create the glitch. Like I said, drag and drop. That's for sale on my website, link below. So if you want to save some time, that's available. So I'm gonna go ahead and just use the project file that I saved, the little drag and drop thing, just to show you guys. So here it is, it's my 3D glitch template. I have it so that you can use it for the newest version of After Effects all the way down to the older version. So if you do decide to purchase, just drag it into your um, project file here. And again, you don't have to spend the money. I have a full free guide on how to make it linked below. You are gonna have this channel glitch composition. Let's double click on there. And you'll see I set it up so it just says right click to replace footage. You can also, if you have it in your project band, you can just hold down alt and just drag it over this kind of um, media missing file. So let's right click and we're going to click replace footage with file. And we're going to put in any footage that we like to add that 3D kind of glitch to. So I drag some footage I'd like to glitch into my project bin. I'm just gonna hold down alt and then, you and then just click and drag that over the little replace media offline clip. And now that's taken the placeholder of that. So we can go to our glitch control, go up to effect control. And if we add just a subtle amount, you'll see now we can have that kind of 3D um, wave going on there. So the results really do depend on the clip. Um, but as you can see, if you want to create that kind of mountainous 3D glitch, this is something that could really help you with that. And if you want to kind of space it out like that pitch, pixel stretch animation, what you need to do is whenever, if you do follow along the tutorial for this, just add more duplications in between whenever you are setting it up. If you're setting it up, you'll know what I mean by that. You guys could also try and mix in the optics compensation so that it kind of starts like this and then it pixel stretches. All right guys, and the last thing I wanted to point out is actually this pixel stretch plugin from ascripts.com. This is 100% not sponsored. I just figured I'd mention it because you can do some very interesting things. A lot of stuff like that stretching that you see in the music video. So if you want to pick it up, like I said, it's not sponsored. This is just something I stumbled across. It's $35. So the plugin pretty much speaks for itself. Just control plus D to duplicate the rotoscoped layer that we made earlier. Search in your effects and presets for the pixel stretch that we downloaded and installed. If you do want to pick it up and then just play around with some of these settings and you guys can create some cool little keyframe animations. This value at zero, keyframe it, drag a bit, and then I'll crank this value to the right. I'll crank this value to the right. You can change the direction, left, right, up, and down. You get some pretty cool results as you can see. The link to this will be down below if you want to add that plugin to your arsenal. As always guys, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for supporting and I'll see you guys in the next one.